Minha Mônica. Same on this side. Hello? No? Oh, hey! <laughs> figure out my theme finally though. Uh, yeah, so I'm doing like, um, sorry, I'm working on it as we speak. <laughs> I'm doing an exploration of the colors and shapes of nature, uh, regional colors and shapes of nature. So it's going to be, it's like a 3D canvas. And right now I'm just kind of sketching in all my shapes and then, yeah. It should look like a big northwest, like, bunch of trees when I'm done, probably. That's the hope, anyway. Yeah. Well, what's up? Oh. Really? Oh, hun. Yeah. No, I've got time. It's totally fine. I've still got... I only procrastinated. I gave myself like three days, so, and I can work and talk, or work and listen, as the case may be. Okay. So, well, yeah. Okay, so it happened on Saturday. Hmm. Well, what did he say about it? <sighs> okay, well, that's kind of... Yeah, that tracks. That tracks for what I know about him. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, I mean, did he... Oh. Okay, so what did Sheila say about it? Oh. Well, no, I, no, I don't think you're making a big deal. I get why... I get why you're upset about it. Yeah, no, I mean, I would feel the same way. So, I feel like a lot of times you call me and you ask, am I being unreasonable or am I just, am I overreacting? And, uh, sorry, I was just evaluating my, uh, some of my lines look bad. <laughs> um, sorry, but train of thought. You can feel whatever you want to feel, you know? You haven't overreacted until you've taken an action, right? Overreact it, not over-refeel it. The, you know what I mean. You can feel, you know, however it makes you feel. Um, well, there's a lot of things at play here, right? I would not have the same reaction as you because I've been through something like that before. 
right? So this is a, this is a first time for you. A new relationship, new, you know, new boundaries being set. And, you know, you didn't know what to expect necessarily. <laughs> well, so have you? Okay, well, that's good. That's really good. That shows a lot of, I'm not, not trying to be like condescending or patronizing here, but that shows a lot of restraint on your part because I know that when something, when something like that happens that you are very reactionary normally and I know that we've talked about it sometimes and that you told me you wish you wish that you weren't as reactionary, so way to go on that one. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I mean, I've done that before too. Sometimes when emotions are running high, there's nothing to do but, but take a step back because you're not going to solve anything. Yeah, by reacting like Oh yeah, I just, I'm opening up my pens. I'm gonna start blocking in the colors I want. Yeah, I'm gonna make them like 3D off of the canvas too. But I wanted to put some base color down so that I, um, I know where I'm going with it. I wanna make it look like it, like I didn't wait until the last minute. Which is hard to do because I waited until the last minute as usual. Oh yeah, I'm, my art teacher does not like me very much. That's on me. That's my fault. She doesn't like me. So, what do you want to do? Is my question. Okay. Okay. So I'm about to sound like super patronizing. I'm not trying to talk to you like you're a child. I'm just trying to help you talk through your thoughts here. Um, if you say that, if that's the way that you confront him, what do you think his reaction is going to be? Yeah, that's, that's what I would think his reaction would be too. Is that the reaction you want is the question. Yeah, well, there, there's a little bitter person in all of us. Right. So you're upset because, and please correct me if I'm wrong here, you're upset because you don't think he understands how he made you feel. Right. What you're, in the end goal of the interaction that you want to have with him is that you want him to understand how it made you feel. Now, do you want him to understand how it made you feel in that you want him to feel the same way? Do you want to hurt him? Yeah, right. You don't need to do that. I love that. And I feel like that's super mature of you. Again, not trying to be patronizing. I'm just, I'm just giving you my psycho, psychotherapy top, talk here. So we don't want to be retaliatory, which is great because I'm, I'm not a big uh, proponent of that personally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then just wait till you've calmed down a little bit more because we don't, we don't want to engage in these kinds of things when, when you're still heated, right? Because you're going to you are going to be retaliatory, and in my experience, that it doesn't solve very much. It doesn't get you what you want. Well, you know, you know me, I'm always a proponent of careful conflict resolution language. 
right? So you don't say, don't start with, you did this and this and this, and don't come at him with accusations. Come at it as though it's a problem, okay? Right, a problem that you need to solve together. Yeah. And I really, I honestly think it's a simple misunderstanding, right? You guys are both new. Well, I mean, you've known him forever and ever and ever. But this friendship turning into something more is new, you know? And the way that he acted around you as a friend is going to be way different than the way he acts around you as a, you know, potential lifelong partner. And because that experience is new for him, he might still be, like, treading in friend, friend territory with you, right? And sometimes that transition is difficult. Well, have you talked about that? Yeah, because you haven't set up any specific boundaries. He doesn't know. If you don't talk about things, if you don't talk about what your expectations are, how can you even have expectations? Because he's not a mind reader, hon. Yes, that would be lovely. It would be lovely. But no one is. Well, and if you are frequently... If you take the time to lay out your expectations in away and you do it often enough, he might, right? Once a person knows you and your expectations well enough, sorry, well, sorry. Yeah, hold on a second, I'll talk to you for just a second because I'm, I'm very distracted. <clears throat> I was blocking in a new color. Once a person knows you and your expectations well enough, then they can start kind of mind reading you because your expectations have already been set, right? Yeah, well, I mean, if you guys get married and you live together and you're together for 20 years and he does something like this, that's going to be another matter, right? Because it's already been laid out what your expectations are. But, you know, there's always some bumps in the road when you get into a new relationship. I know. I know, and I'm talking about this, like... <laughs> Well, always take everything I say with a grain of salt. I'm not a, I'm not a therapist. <laughs> oh, you know, I would have called you. <laughs> No, nothing's been going on in my neck of I've just been trying to finish up my classes before summer and, like, finish with a good grade. <laughs> and considering I procrastinate like nobody's business, that's going to be a little bit tricky. Yeah. Well, I already pretty much finished everything for, for my philosophy course. That one's all good to go. I, like, I got really into it when... When she signed it, I wrote it all in a couple days and was really pretty thrilled about it. That's a really tough thing about anything that takes creativity, and I, I struggle with this for for everything that I do, really, is if you're not inspired, it is the hardest freaking work you have to do, other than, like, really strong manual labor, because I'm a weakling, you know? <laughs> yeah, 
if I, if I'm inspired, it's fun. It's fast. It's amazing. I can get so much done so quickly, but if I am not inspired, there's nothing like nothing that's more odious to do. I have a, I have a lot of respect for people who make their life being creative because when the inspiration isn't hitting, um, yeah. using any of these art classes I've been taking. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm just walking around and remembered that I had a huge project due soon and I need to... <laughs> yeah, I need to come up with a, an idea for it. I was leaning towards something a lot weirder and darker as I, as I want to do, but... I love the foliage here. I look at it frequently, especially as I get older. I find that I love identifying trees by the shape of their leaves. And I thought that could be cool doing, you know, regional shapes that are familiar to people who are around here. Like, I mean, everybody knows what a, what a maple leaf looks like, right? Like, just the shape of it is iconic. You don't even have to have the color. So I'm kind of messing with shapes and then... Um, like switching up their colors yeah so like for the maple I did it in blue like a white sky blue right and then I've got you know I've got the daffodils and the crocus around here I was doing the crocus and I was thinking to do the crocus in orange and the daffodils in purple yeah it's so like subverting expectations of the shapes you know Yes, it's very avant-garde. <laughs> I don't know. That's what my teacher wants me to do, and I'm like, okay. Can I just draw pretty shapes, please? Yeah, it's like a bunch of canvases I stuck together. It's... <sighs> yeah. Well, because you said it had to be 3D, and originally I was going to do... Like paper mache stuff, which I'm still gonna do the paper mache. I'm just blocking in the colors right now with pen. Um, yeah, so I just made it a box, which is not well, not my most creative move, but you know, I only had three days left, so here we are. Totally am. I'm using the markers that you got me for my birthday like three years ago. <laughs> yeah, no, they're beautiful. I tried to use them in um in a sketchbook before, and they didn't. They weren't very good. And then I did some reading, and alcohol pens. They um because they're done with dye. The paper, if you use the wrong kind of paper, it absorbs their color and so they were really dark and kind of just not very vibrant but I'm using them on canvas now and the canvas is primed and everything so the the, um, the colors not being absorbed yeah and it looks beautiful the color looks really good I'll probably use it on some plastic bits for the the paper mache part I'm gonna do it's, it's plastic mache <laughs> give it just a little more time. He's out of town right now, right? Like he had that work trip. Yeah, so there's no point. Like, don't don't confront him, like, when he's not home. <sighs> oh, yeah. It's, well, you don't want to have come, especially over text, man. Don't do it over text, because you can't tell what people's intonation is over text, and then you start reading what you think it might be, and that will make you crazy. Yeah. Don't make it like a confrontation, okay? Or an intervention. Don't be like, we talk. Just, you could find a way to bring it up naturally, or, or simply just lead with, 
Hey, remember when we did this? Well, I kind of have been thinking a lot about it lately, and it made me feel like this, you know? Yeah. Oh, don't even, don't. <laughs> I'm happy to do that. It's one of my favorite things to do. You know I wish I was a therapist. My take on it, and please, like, this is, I don't know him that, that well, like, I know that you guys have been friends for a long time, but, like, we haven't all hung out as a group very frequently. But my take on it is it was completely thoughtless. It was not intentional. It wasn't to hurt you. It was simply, yeah, like, I don't, we have a tendency, like, at least I do, and I don't want to say that you do, just because I do but to ascribe motive to people that didn't have any motive at all, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you think that's a thing that you wouldn't do, right? That's a thing you think about. And because you wouldn't do it, you think the motive must be, you know, nefarious. When really, it was just a, a thoughtless thing. Now, don't take my word for it. This is something that you obviously need to talk to him about and not me. I mean... <laughs> yeah. So yeah, with what little I know about him, to me it just seemed like a, an accident. Like a, a thoughtless thing that he didn't even think anything about. Because I mean, you guys used to tease like that a lot, right? Like when you were just friends. You guys had a very... Um, teasy relationship yeah and of course it, it hits different now that you are a couple you know those kinds of jokes feel more personal more like hey we're a team and when we're out together I want to be a team and I get that and that's just something that you need to establish with him as all I mean, I don't think it's going to be a super difficult conversation. Like, I think he's genuinely just going to be like, oh man, I didn't even, I didn't even think about that. Thanks for letting me know. I won't do that in the future. So, I don't think you need to be stressed about it, but I think you definitely need to wait until you, yeah, until you've calmed down completely because it will be a completely different conversation if you approach it in an angry way, right? Because he's going to get defensive. Time it made this part way less boring. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm still on for next week. As long as I finish all my finals and stuff. Okay. Well, it was great talking to you. Most of it. Let me do this one. 
look right. That's okay. anyway. Okay, that looks right. like this one.